What's up everybody? Welcome to Jekyll installation introduction and setup video which is the first video in the Jekyll series that I'm planning on doing. Uh, the very first thing I want to make clear is the reason why am I doing this and the reason is to display a practical usage of Jekyll's functionality as well as to sum up some of the problems I have faced in the past with Jekyll Hopefully these videos will help some of you folks to better understand Jekyll and will save you some time in the future. So let's get into it. What is Jekyll? Jekyll is a static website generator written in Ruby and uh, built by co-founder of GitHub Tom Preston Werner. Jekyll generates static HTML pages which means it does not use a database. If you're looking for more flexible, functional or dynamic options, as well as if you're developing a website which will be maintained by a person who does not have any knowledge in HTML, you might want to take a look at some CMS solutions as Drupal or WordPress. So you would probably ask yourself, why would you use Jekyll? Jekyll is a simple and efficient way to produce content for a blog website. I am going to mention only a few advantages here. You can write the content in Markdown or text style in your favorite text editor. You can write and preview it in your local environment, which means that internet connection is not required. Jekyll websites can be hosted as GitHub pages and updated via Git. It supports SaaS out of the box and it is just great. Bottom line is if you are more comfortable with a command line rather than a CMS admin panel, Jacob will suit you good. As we can see from the official website to install and set up your very first Jekyll project, you will need just a few lines in your command line. Let's get into it. Ruby comes pre-installed with all macOS machines, so it's a win. So, let's open our terminal window and let's make it bigger. Rather than typing gem install Jekyll, I'm going to type in sudo gem install Jekyll, because you will need the admin rights to install Jekyll. After I've hit enter, I've just started the installation process and it might take up to a couple of minutes. As you can see, we've just successfully installed Jekyll version 2.5.3. Now let's go to the desktop as this is where my Jekyll directory will go. And now let's type Jekyll New Design Studio as this will be the name of our new project. So as you can see on my desktop, we just got a new folder called Design Studio. Let's open it up. And it has a few files in there. Uh, let's open Sublime Editor. Okay, so we have our folder inside the Sublime Editor, so now let's inspect the content of this folder and what Jekyll has for us by default. The very first folder we can see is underscore includes folder and it has three HTML files. These are the codes that you don't want to retype for each page and they're being used by layouts. Underscore layouts currently has only three files which are default page and posts. Uh, default is currently being used for the front page while the page layout is being used for the about page as well as we will be modifying it as well as using for other pages and there is another the layout called post post which is being used for Yes, you guessed correct. The posts. As you can see, it has a really long name and there is a reason for that, which I'm going to explain later on as we will look more into the blog posts. We also have an underscore SAS folder, which has multiple SCSS files, which will be included in our main SCSS file. Also, we have a this underscore config.yaml. Inside the config.yaml file, Jekyll stores all the information about your website. There we will specify it later on. Also, we have the about page and we have the 
index page, which is the front or home page of our website. You may have noticed that the front page and the about page have different formats as the front page is HTML and the about is a markdown. There are reasons for that, but I'm not going to go into them just yet, as I will talk more in depth about them later on. So let's close some of the folders and go back to our terminal now. As right now we're in a desktop folder, let's cd into our design studio and say Jekyll serve which will generate our website. You may have noticed that now we have two more folders in our design studio. And this is a SAS cache where you won't find anything interesting. As well as we now have underscore site folder, which is basically where Jekyll generates our website. To view the website, all we have to do is go to the localhost port 4000. So let's go there. And here we can see our website. It's pretty tight and neat. By default, Jekyll comes with this really nice, responsive, and minimalistic theme, which can come in quite handy, but there are plenty of other free themes online that you can download and set up your Jekyll with. As for this project, we are going to build our own theme on top of Twitter Bootstrap. Now let's create our first page. Let's say we don't want the blog post to display on the home page and we want to move them to a blog page. Let's create a blog page by copying the content of index.html and change the page layout as well as add the title. Let's also add a fancy self-generating H1 element by copying the post style and change the post to page as the page is the layout that we are using for this page. Notice that I don't have to restart Jekyll serving from the command line as from version 2.4 is watching for the changes automatically. As we refresh our browser, we will see that our blog page is now in the menu and we can check it out. But hey, something doesn't look quite nice here, does it? Check out the URL address bar. One way to solve this is by creating a blog folder, moving our blog.html page inside of this folder and renaming it into index.html. However, this method is not as efficient, so let's go back to our blog.html page and in the YAML setting on top of the page, let's give it a permalink that will state permalink colon slash blog slash. Now, as we save the file, Jekyll will regenerate the edited files into the site folder and let's go to the browser and see what has changed. And this actually looks like what we wanted, so it's good. Okay, now if we click on the post, we will see that the link does not start with the blog as we wanted to. Let's see what is happening here. First, let's mention a couple of words about the post files file names. By default, Jekyll uses this name structure to sort the posts by their dates. As we don't want to change this just yet, we will leave this at that for now. We can see that the only post we have has two categories in a YAML setting and this is what makes the path have these words in it. Notice it matters in what order you will put these categories as it will change the order of these words in a URL path. One way to get what we want is to delete the current categories and write block in their place. But we are not going to do this with every future post we will have. In our Jekyll project folder, let's create a folder called block and move our post inside of it. Jekyll will automatically regenerate the site for us. As we can see in the browser, our new post has a more appropriate path. This video was an introduction to Jekyll and if you got to this point, it means that my voice did not bore you to sleep and that is something. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the layouts. We will customize current ones as well as creating our own. Later on, I also want to talk about creating your own pages as well as managing menu. You may have noticed that our blog page appeared in the menu automatically and it was not magic. 
If you have any questions or suggestions for this or the future videos, please leave a comment below. My name is Anton and see you next time.